Hello, today I'm going to make my biscuits. I wanted to first start by saying uh, that this recipe uh, should be started. Uh, you should preheat the oven at 475 and then gre and grease your cookie sheet. So I, w I wanted to say that first and this recipe I've uh, kind of tweaked a little bit and I've come to, uh, there's two ways to do it. One way is with eggs and um, the second way is without eggs. And this way I'm showing you today is without eggs. <laughs> And it makes a more um, lighter, crumblier uh, biscuit. So it's really good for uh, for gravy, sausage gravy, any kind of gravy you want to pour over it. It's uh, really good for just being able to... Now, it still holds together. I don't want you to think it doesn't hold together. It does hold together. I just... It's much better for a crumbly consistency so you can... It gets nice and crispy and for putting gravy over First, I usually start by getting the liquid ingredients ready. I get it ready, but I don't, obviously, we don't use it first. I usually will measure out, it takes three-fourths of a cup of milk, and it takes three tablespoons of melted butter. So I'll go and melt the butter first and measure out the milk and have that ready. Then I will measure out the flour. Now this recipe takes... Two cups. I like to make it nice and fluffy. If you stir your flour, like scoop it up and, and dump it back out again, it makes your flour lighter. If your flour has been sitting for a long time. Two cups. And then it takes four teaspoons of baking powder. I already got that measured out. A half a teaspoon of salt. Calls for two teaspoons of sugar. The way I tweaked the recipe was take, leaving out the eggs that it had, it had originally called for one egg. So if you want it to be a more firmer, uh, more uh, held together biscuit, just add one egg. And when you'll add the egg is when you add the milk, when you add your liquids. It calls for a third of a cup of shortening. Now usually I'll use lard, but we're out of lard and I have bacon grease, and that is a shortening also. So we're gonna try it with bacon grease this time. And then you take your hands, you kinda incorporate it, crumbling it together. You incorporate it by rubbing it through your fingers until um, the lard has been uh, put through the flour to about a crumbly consistency like that. You can see there's little bits of bacon uh, lard everywhere. This is when you add the liquids to the butter. And the milk. And 
Now, this is the part where you want to just be careful. You want to scrape around the edges and flip in. Scrape around the edges, flip in. This is incorporating it all, but you don't want to stir it too much. There we go. I go through about once through just to make sure there's no dry pockets. Now, I know this seems really wet. There's a dry pocket. There we go. Now, the less you stir it, the better. The uh, more tender your biscuit will be. When you flour a board or wherever you're gonna roll your biscuits out. I don't roll mine, I just press mine into the form that I want them. Like I said, the less you work with the dough, the more tender it is. Just dab it onto the nicely floured surface. All the moist pot, uh, parts are now dry. Now I press it out to the high, uh, thickness that I need it. I don't like to go too too thin. This was my mother's biscuit cutter. She gave it to me before she passed away. And I like to. I don't make a full circle because this is such a large, bi large biscuit cutter. I, I, I'm afraid of not getting enough uh, heaven. There we go. First biscuit. Right, curling the edges. Oh, here's another little tip that you. It, it's it's pretty important. Don't ever, when you're cutting your biscuits, don't ever twist them. You want to go straight down and out and pull it out. Because if you twist it, um, it can actually make it not be able to rise up when it's baking. And you want to put them close to each other. When they're, when they're rising, when they're close to each other, they help each other to rise up. This one doesn't need cut, just needs to form back into a shape. Looks something like a biscuit. And then it is the last one. Now, I got the oven heating at, at 475, and we're going to pop these in. Now, you have to keep a close eye on these because I try not to put them on the bottom rack because the bottoms will... Um, they will burn. So you just want to be careful about that. You want to put them either in the middle or even put them up on the top rack. And, um, and at 475, is a re it needs to have a good, nice, hot temperature to get it to bake well. So I'm going to put them in. I wanted to tell you about the book that I got this recipe from originally. 
I doctored it up to change it to the way we liked it, but this is where I originally had gotten the recipe, and it's uh, Tasha Tudor's, uh, the Tasha Tudor cookbook. And um, it's not just got biscuit recipes, it's got all kinds of wonderful recipes in it. And um, I've been a cookbook collector for years now and most of the time if I can find one recipe or maybe two recipes out of a cookbook I used to be happy that I could that we that I enjoyed um, and that would make it worthwhile to me for me to buy that cookbook this cookbook almost every single recipe I've tried I think there was only two that I did not like and um, so it was definitely it's it's a a really really good recipe uh, recipe book that I've uh, learned to love just wanted to share this with you okay while the biscuits are cooking I like to always do the, the sausage gravy for the biscuits please give it a thumbs up and like and subscribe. Thank you. You know why I have a plate full of biscuits and gravy? Because my wife loves me.